I come out here walking my dogs quite regularly and just before Christmas we had a few days of good storm and I know having known the beach for a few years I know that when there's a storm some of the mud will get washed off so I thought let's go see what we can find and we were out here playing with the dogs as I often do and Sam came running past him with a ball in his mouth and as he went past him and did a double take at something he was like what have you found there Sam? Oh my God, Sam, what have you found? And I put some photos on a, a Facebook group that I'm a member of, uh, UK Wildlife Photography, and it just went mad from there, like 900 likes on a photograph you put on a Facebook page. You think, I know this is quite special. From there, it got picked up by newspapers globally. I mean, my dogs have ended up in the New York Post, for goodness sake, you know. I've had interest from all sorts of people. People coming want to dig it up, people offering me cash to tell them where it is. Um, so, which is why I needed some advice on where to go and what to do. So we came up here, we met with John, we went out and he showed us where it was and then we got together with also the other authorities here who worked really hard to get all the paperwork sorted in time. As you might imagine on this coast, a lot of various permissions, it's a national nature reserve, it's a special protection area. So Natural England, the Southwest Heritage Trust and Environment Agency, they all worked really hard to help get everything done in time so that we could get in and help rescue the fossil before it got washed out to sea. I'm Dr Andy King, uh, one of the, the geologists with Gekoella, and the rocks around us that we've been uh, playing with today are about 197 million years old. The judgment call then really is to how close you actually make the cuts to the fossil itself, uh, in order obviously not to risk damaging the fossil, but also when it comes to, to lever it up and jump the fossil as a, as a block or one or two blocks, uh, is that it's solid enough to, to stay like that and not crumble away. Finding even semi-complete um, fossil ichthyosaurs is a rare occurrence. I'd estimate on this Somerset coast then, perhaps you might find a skull or a section of rib cage, perhaps once every two years, once every three years. And quite, quite often you'll find bits and pieces of teeth or, um, or ribs or, or vertebra. Those are uncommon. But to actually find such a large, complete specimen like this, yeah, is quite a rare occurrence. And certainly for, for John, I think it's almost once in a lifetime kind of discovery. So uh, he's delighted and we're equally as delighted as so we've got it, got it out and rescued it. I'm Amber and I'm an assistant ecologist at Gekuela and I also help out on the technical side of things. So I joined Gekuela four months ago. It's an environmental consultancy, but we specialise in ecology and geology. This is a really well preserved fossil. Everything apart from his head was intact and you can see the ribs really well. You can see all the bones really well. So it's actually quite a rare find to find one that is just so beautifully preserved. And that's probably due to the type of rock it was found in. The dig has gone successfully. It was quite a challenge. We had a very narrow window between the tides. Uh, and also the rock here that we've been working with has been really quite shaly and quite fissile. Ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, you can see a lot about these in the museum in Somerset. There's a whole sort of diorama that explains all about a seascape, because you've got to remember these were all times when it was underwater. Today, with the recovery of this one, this adds a, a lot more to the collections. And with experts like Andy, we can begin to then piece together a much more exciting story about life in this landscape. On the Somerset coast and elsewhere, there's a fossil collecting code. So this is all about how to collect fossils responsibly. So what we want is for the fossils to be kept for people to enjoy. So on the whole, like if you find a loose fossil, then everybody loves fossil collecting, that's fine. But when a fossil is embedded in a rock, then it's best not to chip away and to actually dig it out. If you see something which looks like it's got a big, long backbone, there we might be talking about a plesiosaur or a nictiosaur. And those are the big marine reptiles from 100 and 50, 180 million years ago. They're really exciting to find. And again, that's the kind of thing that the museum would be interested in conserving. <laughs>